Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover how to use cross cancellation when multiplying and dividing mixed numbers. We're going to start with multiplication. Let's jump into our example where we have 10 and 1 eighth times 4 and 4 ninths. Now the first thing that we need to do, we need to convert these mixed numbers to improper fractions. That way we just have a numerator and a denominator. We'll start with 10 and 1 eighth. So let's go from the bottom and work our way to the top. So we multiply and then add. We do our denominator times the whole number. So 8 times 10, which is 80, plus our numerator, which is 1. So 80 plus 1 is 81. That's our numerator of the improper fraction. We keep our denominator of 8 the same. We'll bring our multiplication sign down and then convert our second mixed number. Start at the bottom, we multiply, and then add. So nine times four is 36, plus four is 40. So that's our numerator, and we keep our denominator of nine the same. So we have 81 eighths times 40 ninths. 81 eighths is equivalent to 10 and 1 eighth. It's just in the form of an improper fraction. And then 10 and 1 eighth is in the form of a mixed number. Both of those are equivalent. So when we convert to an improper fraction, we're not changing the value of anything. And then 40 ninths is equivalent to 4 and 4 ninths. Again, we did this. So we just have a numerator and a denominator, and we are able to multiply. At this point, we can multiply straight across. So we can do 81 times 40 and then eight times nine, but we can use cross cancellation. And this is a way to simplify fractions before multiplying. It gives us smaller and easier numbers to work with, therefore a simpler problem to solve. We cross cancel by looking for common factors between the numerators and denominators. So the top and bottom. Think of it as simplifying fractions, but we can look diagonally as well. For example, we have 81 and 9. So 81 right here and 9 diagonally. We can look for common factors there. A common factor between 81 and 9 is 9. So what we can do, we can divide both of those by 9. So let's cross them out and divide them both by 9. 81 divided by 9 is 9, and then 9 divided by 9 is 1. So you can see that gave us some smaller numbers in value and easier numbers to work with. We can also look the other way diagonally. So between 8 and 40, do we have any common factors? Yes, the greatest common factor between 8 and 40 is 8. So let's divide them both by 8. So 8 divided by 8, let's cross it out. That's going to give us 1, and then 40 divided by 8 is 5. Once we get to this point, we can multiply straight across. 9 times 5 is 45, and then 1 times 1 is 1. Now 45 over 1, that equals 45, so let's write our answer as a whole number instead of leaving it as an improper fraction. So our final answer. 45. Now, if we did not use cross cancellation, we would have to multiply 81 times 40 and then 8 times 9 and then simplify from there, and eventually we're going to get the same answer. So, cross cancellation is a useful tool when we have multiplication problems that involve fractions. Again, it gives us smaller and easier numbers to work with, therefore, a simpler problem to solve. Think of it as simplifying the problem before multiplying. Now, can we use cross cancellation for every single multiplication problem that involves fractions? No, we have to have common factors other than one between our numerators and denominators. If the only common factor we have is one between our numerators and denominators, we can't use cross cancellation. So something to keep in mind. So there's how to use cancellation when multiplying mixed numbers. Let's move on to dividing mixed numbers. 
Let's jump into our example where we have 8 and 4 sevenths divided by 2 and 2 fifths. Now we use cross cancellation when we get to the multiplying step. So keep that in mind. Now the first thing that we want to do is convert these mixed numbers to improper fractions. That way we just have a numerator and a denominator and we can move forward with our steps. So we'll start with 8 and 4 sevenths. We'll start at the bottom and work our way to the top. We multiply, then add. So we do our denominator times the whole number. 7 times 8 is 56, plus our numerator of 4. So 56 plus 4, that gives us 60. We keep our denominator of 7 the same. Let's bring our division sign down, then do the second mixed number here. So start at the bottom, multiply, then add. 5 times 2 is 10, plus 2 is 12. So we get 12 fifths. Now that we have our mixed numbers converted to improper fractions, we can go through our dividing fractions steps. Keep, switch, flip. Also known as keep, change, flip. There's different words out there for the steps, but they all mean the same thing. One thing I do want to mention before moving forward, these improper fractions are equivalent to the mixed numbers. So 60 sevenths is equivalent to 8 and 4 sevenths. 12 fifths is equivalent to 2 and 2 fifths. So when we convert to improper fractions, we're not changing the value of the problem at all. All right, let's go through our steps, keep, switch, flip. So we always keep the first fraction. So 60 over 7. Then we switch or change to multiplication and then flip our second fraction. So the denominator becomes the numerator and the numerator becomes the denominator. This is called the reciprocal. So we have 5 twelfths. Now we can multiply straight across. But in this problem, we have an opportunity for cross cancellation. Cross cancellation is a way to simplify fractions before multiplying. It gives us smaller and easier numbers to work with, therefore a simpler problem to solve. We cross cancel by looking for common factors between the numerators and denominators, so the top and bottom. Think of it like simplifying fractions but we can look diagonally as well. For example, we have common factors other than 1 between 60 and 12, and a greatest common factor of 12. So let's divide 60 and 12 by 12. We do that by crossing them out and dividing by 12. So 60 divided by 12 is 5. 12 divided by 12 is 1. We can also look diagonally the other way, so we have 7 and 5. The only common factor between 7 and 5 is 1, so we can't use cross cancellation with the 7 and the 5. Once we cross cancel, we can multiply straight across. So we have 5 times 5, which is 25. And then we have 7 times 1, which is 7. So we get to 25 sevenths. That's an improper fraction. Let's convert it to a mixed number. So we do that by doing the numerator, 25, divided by 7. So 25 divided by 7. Let's think how many whole groups of 7 can we pull out of 25. Well, three whole groups of 7. That's our whole number. Now, we do not hit 25 exactly. We have something left over, a remainder. So the difference between 25 and 21 is 4. That's our remainder. So that's our numerator. And then we keep our denominator of 7 the same. Always look to see if you can simplify the fractional part of a mixed number. 4 sevenths is in simplest form. So this is our final answer. 3 and 4 sevenths. Now do we have to use cross cancellation? No, we can multiply straight across and do 60 times 5 and 7 times 12, then go from there. But cross cancellation, again, gave us smaller and easier numbers to work with. It's a useful tool 
to use when looking at multiplication problems that involve fractions. And another thing I want to mention, cross cancellation can't be used with every problem. We have to have common factors other than one between our numerators and denominators that we can divide by. If the only common factor is one, then cross cancellation cannot be used. So there you have it. There's how to use cancellation when multiplying and dividing mixed numbers. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.